Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to build a gallery sample in React using Oracle Content and Experience as a headless CMS. My name is Lena Shah and I'm a developer at Oracle working on the content management headless samples. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do is clone this repository in GitHub. This is a universal React gallery sample that is already set up to use Oracle Content Management. The code on GitHub is available for you to contribute to and to give feedback on. Let's go ahead and clone this repository from GitHub. I'm going to use my command prompt. And clone this repo. Once that is done, I will change over to, to the newly created directory. Now you can open up this sample in any editor of your choice. I will be using Visual Studio. Now, before I proceed to show you the structure of this sample, I am going to download the dependencies for this project using npm install. Now, while that is running, let's take a look at some of the files inside the sample. This package.json, which has all the scripts that you need to build and run the sample. You also have the dependencies section, which lists all the dependencies for this sample. Note that this sample has a dependency on the content SDK. You will also notice that there are some configuration files for Webpack. I also wanted to point out the .env file you see over here. This file, it is the OS configuration file. We use environment variables to store configuration information about the Oracle Content Management Server. The server that is listed in server URL is a public Oracle Content Management Server. The channel token is what will be used by React to authenticate into our Oracle Content Management instance. One thing that is really important is to ensure that you configure your cross-origin resource sharing to avoid any distributed denial of service attack, DDoS. It's best not to check in this information as part of your source control code because attackers may use it to attempt to access your OCE instance. Now, as you can see in the terminal here, the dependencies have been downloaded so let's fire up a build by running the command npm run build. What this command does is put together several bundles, both a server bundle and a client bundle that will make the universal React sample available on the local machine. Now that the build is done, let's fire up a local development server by running npm run start. What this does is it fires up an express server whose port is configured in the .env file. As you can see, the server is listening on port 8080. Let's go on over to the browser and see the sample in action. As you can see here, our headless React gallery sample contains a homepage that is demonstrating how taxonomies can be used 
to categorize content. Categories are child nodes of a taxonomy and can be organized into hierarchies. For our image gallery sample, we want to show all available categories regardless of the organization. To accomplish this, we first find all the available taxonomies and then get the set of categories for each of them. This homepage is showing a preview of the items in a category. Clicking on this shows us all the published assets in the category. Clicking on an image in the grid brings up a larger rendition of the image and also allows you to navigate through the images in the category. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the source code, which is making all of this possible. As I mentioned before, all of our source files are under the source folder. Let's go ahead and take a look first at the scripts folder and the server config utils.js. Oracle Content Management makes available Content SDK for anyone to use who wants to build a headless application in conjunction with their specific application framework. One of the things this file does is instantiate a new delivery client that will enable access to all the content that is stored in the server. Here we are using the variables that were defined in the .env file that we saw earlier. Next, let's take a look at services.js file. In here, you will find functions or methods that encapsulate the content SDK that makes the calls to the server to fetch the data. For example, here's a method that encapsulates a call using the delivery client to get the items. This is fet fetching all the items for a specified category. Here you see um, the fetch categories for taxonomy ID, making use of the delivery client to get the categories for a particular taxonomy. So this file basically contains all the methods um, that use the delivery client to make the calls, fetch the data, and this data is returned back to the React components. Let's take a look at how that is all achieved. For that, let's take a look at the router.js that you will find under the pages folder. This is the global router that is shared between the client and the server. This router will route to the appropriate page component for the request path. And these in turn will use subcomponents that are defined in the components folder. So as you can see, the root path is routed to the home page component that you find under pages. Similarly, the second page, which gets all the categories and which has a path of a category along with the category ID is routed to image grid page. Let's go ahead and take a look at the home page component. As you can see, this is a React component and it has all the lifecycle methods of a React component. Here in component did mount, it makes a call to fetch the data. This in turn makes a call to get home page data, which was defined in services.js, which, which we saw earlier. That method will make the call to the server, return back with the data, which then gets sent to the render method. This method takes the data, converts it into HTML, and sends it back to the browser. Fetch initial data is a method that will be called if you were doing a server-side rendering. As you can see in this render method, we make a call to, we include another component called the gallery. 
Now you will find this component under the components folder. Let's take a quick look at that. So the gallery is also a React component. It takes in data and again, spits out HTML to be sent to the browser. The second page is rendered by this image grid page component, which follows a similar structure to the home page component. It has all the React lifecycle methods, and it also has this render method, which basically takes in the data and converts it to HTML. It follows a common pattern, which you will see where this makes a call to services to a method in services.js. That services.js uses the content SDK to make calls to the server, get the data back, and that data is sent back to a page component. Now, having looked at the source files, let's revisit the gallery sample in the browser once again. As you can see here, the home page, which is a root path of slash, gets redirected to the home page component that we saw earlier. That component in turn will make a call to a method inside of services.js to get all the taxonomies. Then for each taxonomy, get a category, get all the categories. And then for the categories, it fetches um, four items for preview. Once you click on the preview, it takes you to the second page, which has a path of category followed by an ID. This gets routed to the image grid page, which in turn gets all the items that belong to a specific category. All of this content is coming directly from the Oracle content management in the context of this React component. All the items that are sent back in the results, they, they have a differently sized rendition URLs to display each item either in the smaller grid or in a full height preview mode. Well, that's it from my end. Thank you for watching this video about how you can use React in conjunction with Oracle Content Management as a headless content management system to build and implement a gallery app. You can find more samples like this on our headless host documentation pages. Have fun building.